Miko Letton. Miko Letton. Letton. Um, so this is a guy who was the, I think he finished fourth in KHL scoring overall. He finished extremely high and he was uh, the leader of Jokerit of the uh, Continental Hockey League, and, and, formerly and of the SM Liga. Right. And, and where course, are they in terms of like comp- competitiveness? Are they a good team? Jokerit? Um, they were, if I remember correctly, and I'll check this out right now. Um, Jokerit was, uh, they were in the playoffs, like mid Gagarin Cup playoffs. And I want to say they were the first team to just say, guys, we're not playing anymore. Like, because the KHL hadn't shut down operations. And Jokerit was just like, guys, we, we quit. We're not playing. <laughs> so, and then shortly after, they were like, well, I mean, teams are quitting on us, so I suppose we'll have to. That's the most Russian thing to happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, they were the third seed uh, in the first round of the West taking on Locomotive. So, that's very good. Okay. Now, very good team. the reason that Miko Letnin – being fourth in league scoring is a big deal because you would expect anybody out of the KHL to be somewhat of a high performer if they're going to go to the NHL. First off, it's not easy to score points in the KHL. A lot of people, even a point per game pace is pretty rare. The second thing is this guy's a defenseman. Unfortunately, though, a left shot defenseman. Yeah, which means he's garbage (laughs) and the Leafs shouldn't sign him, right? Right, right, because why would you want to do that? Now, it is interesting because – there can be a couple of things at play here. Obviously, this is a player who wanted to make the jump. He's 26 years old, um, could have an opportunity. If he comes into camp and he bombs, then he can always go back. I mean, that's always possible as well. Uh, but I think they're expecting him to be, a minimum, a top six guy next year. And the question becomes right away, what does that mean for the rest of the Leafs blue line, which is already thin, but already but a little bit stacked on the left side. And, you know, you've got Travis Dermott and Rasmus Sandin, Sandin, excuse me, they're already ready to go. Uh, you would expect Rasmus Sandin probably may be ready to go. Maybe he sees some playoff time. Uh, and then if this, you know, say the season starts in December, like we've heard, you know, by December, I would think with, with some of the games that they're going to play, some of the games the Marlies might play. I mean, I don't know if the AHL is looking at coming back or if they've completely canceled. But regardless, you would think that there's going to be a lineup a mile long uh, for that third left-handed shot defenseman spot. Now, that doesn't mean that Travis Dermott, Miko Lettinen, or Rasmus Sandin can't play the right side. It just means it's not optimal. And the question, I think, is, firstly, do we have a coach that's willing to explore that, that's willing to explore, like <laughs> T.J. Brody does, playing a left-handed shot defenseman on the right side and sustaining it and, you know, letting him get used to it? Play. Listen, the Leafs defense stinks. Play yes. your, by the way, I'm late, Dangle. I don't know mm. if you see, see my name there. Sorry, sorry, there, fellas. Um, they're, they're not good. Play your best six defensemen and uh, figure out the handedness later. Um, they're, they're already thin on the right side. They're probably going to lose Tyson Berry. They're going to lose Cody Cece. So Justin Hall, if I'm not mistaken, is the only right-handed defender they have signed back there. Oh, and Timothy Lilligren. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't appear to be ready yet. Well, maybe you go, maybe he is, right? Um, here's, here's the thing. So a lot of, you know, we joked about it off the top that Miko Lettinen is the best ever and he's Bobby Orr slash Nicholas Lidstrom slash Gretzky, but backwards mm-hmm. and all that. Before the Leafs signed him, people were talking about him, calling him, one of the best, if not the best defenseman in Europe. When it was rumored he was going to the Devils, when it was rumored he was going to the Habs were a big one, when he was rumored to be going to the Rangers or talking to all these teams. The Leafs came out of left field. So I don't know what the hell he – I don't know what the hell Kyle Dubas did to convince him to come to the Leafs, no bonuses. There doesn't appear to be any room for him. Obviously, they got to get creative. And they don't even have to get that creative. Miko Lettinen – uh, just last season when he was in the Swedish Hockey League, played with HV71, and he played supposedly the whole season on the right side. Um, he did say in the press conference call that he had played it on the right side and was capable of it. He's right. capable of it. Yeah, Riley's done it. Uh, Dermot has done it, but I went on my uh, you know, bi-weekly rant, it seems, about Travis Dermot playing the right side. Until they do it, I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna continue to talk about it as an option. 
Can I bring up something that sure. happened when this uh, when this came down? Sure. So uh, we, we were, were we were awarded the Stanley Cup. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> we All were right. in the studio at Virgin Radio, and I told Adam that uh, he had signed. And Adam probably said, "Does this mean Travis Dermott is out the door?" Because that seems like the logical conclusion. There's the thing: they're cash traps, right? Cash traps, and even if Travis Dermott makes Justin Hall money. The Justin Hall bucks. It's too much. Um, like well, they can't it, it's it. too much. I think they can't afford that. Right. Yeah. So what, what does that mean? And Travis Dermott, you would expect, I mean, this is a defenseman who still, as much as he sort of has been had an up and down season, ranks pretty highly among defensemen his age. And if you compare some of the better defensemen in the NHL now, they had numbers similar to him at a similar age. This is Dermott you're talking about. Yeah. 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 And Josh and- Morrissey comes to mind. Yeah, like I'm not, I'm not ready to give up on Dermot. I criticized him pretty heavily this season, but like he was coming off an injury. Not everyone comes off of surgery better, like Zach Hyman. Right. Like that, that's a weird season Zach Hyman had and a fantastic one. Not everyone comes off it better. And, you know, that wasn't the first significant injury that Travis Dermot has had um, throughout his career. But you're right, Adam. This guy is due for a race, no matter what. Mm-hmm. So what's it going to be? There is nothing but good news that comes from this signing. Either they trade Dermot and get something for him. They Mm -hmm. trade someone else and get something for him. It pressures Dermot into a different kind of contract that's more team-friendly for the Leafs. The the Leafs adding talent is never a bad thing. Ever, ever, ever. But I, I, I take oh, umbrage with people suggesting, and, and this is Professor? Uh, no, no. I just, I, I, there, are, there is a suggestion out there that because this signing happens, if the Leafs trade Travis Dermott, that they've given up on him. And I think sometimes in the NHL, it's not about giving up on. It's getting the best value for him, even if that value is young, good, talented defense. Yeah. Like, if you could have Travis Dermott that played steady on the right side. You wouldn't need to move him. You wouldn't need to move him. Right. And that's, that's the thing. It's, it seems like such an odd thing, though, to trade a guy that you've had in your system for four and a half years to get a guy who just happens to be right-handed. Like, that just seems like – it just seems yeah. odd to me unless you can dial back the clock and get somebody who's maybe on an entry-level uh, deal who is only going to make, you know, eight or 900 grand for the next couple of seasons. If they see another Travis Dermott and they're like, we're going to trade – uh, current wins for some future wins so we can keep under the cap. Like, that's the only way I see that working. I don't see them bring, being able to bring in some big salary um, unless you're packaging a guy like Alex Kerfoot, Andreas Janssen, Casper Kapan. You can trade Sandine. No, you mm-hmm. can't. No, I'm saying no, you could, though. You could. You can trade anybody. You can trade oh, yeah. absolutely anybody in yeah. the world. Um, another option that I threw out there, uh, connecting it to a topic that we discussed on the podcast, and I don't think this is likely, but it is something that's possibly out there. Um, if they do play three and threes, because Miko Lettinen can't play in the NHL until next season. Right. Next season that we talked about could start in December, run through July. They're going to have to – they still want to play 82 games. they got to condense the schedule. If you're going to be playing three and threes, you're going to want four competent NHL pairings to carry yeah. with you throughout the season. That's true. Not even to have, you know, chilling in the minors and then you call them up to be black aces during the, the playoffs or whatever. So I, I, there's, there's nothing bad about it. And I feel like it's very leafy to be like, so who's gone? Mm-hmm. Well, we, we know the answer. The Cody CC is gone and Tyson Berry is gone. Um, I don't know if anyone's getting dealt. I think, and people forget that, you know, you can also reevaluate once the season begins. Uh, so there's the preseason. Um, there's whatever's left of this season, which is going to be sort of this weird half season, but you can try Travis Dermott out on the right side full time. You can try Morgan Riley out on the right side full time. You can try Miko Lettinen on the right side full time. Martin Marincin's a left-handed defenseman who plays on the right, uh, pretty often. It's not great, but, and this is another thing. I think the Leafs really like Martin Marincin. I I think the Leafs really like Travis Dermott, uh, and the person he is. You know, I, I think they're really big on, a, on personality and a type of person they can trust. Um, so that's why I was saying Martin Marincin must be the best. Like, he must be just a gem of a human being. <laughs> knows what to get everyone for Christmas. That This guy, he's always, he walks in with coffee every morning. He's never late. 
Am I right, Jesse? High five. Oh. <laughs> 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 He's just a gem. He's just a, a His gem name would be a, li- a little different in the Zoom. I don't think it'd be late dangle. No, no it'd true. be on know. time, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question. Sure. Why does it seem like it's been years now that the Leafs have had a hole on the right side of their defense? and they haven't been able to plug it with anybody. Why is it every year, every offseason, every trade deadline, they can't just fill this one simple hole that it seems like they have every single year? It's not so simple, unfortunately. You know, it's, it's, there's a reason right-hand defensemen get overpaid throughout the league. There was, there was a number yeah, of years. but if it's half a decade, it's a little yeah. more simple yeah. than that. No, you know? I know. Yeah, you you're five right. Five offseasons is enough time. And, yeah, and you're like, Justin Hall? Like, that's crafty. Yeah. But, like, now you're paying him $2 million bucks, and he started to stink as soon as you signed it. So that's a little concerning. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, but I, I remember for the longest time, the Leafs had a hole on right wing. They had no one. They had, like, I think Ty Domi was, like, their only natural right winger. And now they're stacked. But there's another hole. So what do you do? I don't know. They had Ron Hainsey on the top pair for two years. Mm-hmm. And I know um, the Leafs didn't want to do that anymore. Obviously, Ron Hainsey left. Mike Babcock got fired. But if the Leafs wanted to make that change that badly, if they hated having him up there that badly, there's things they could have done, and they didn't do it. So, you know, the three lefts, three rights, it's not the case for most teams throughout the league, I'm pretty sure. 